So this is part two of working on Sears tractors. So I've got the orange um, 68 Hydro right here upside down, working on mounting a transmission in there. 71 HT14 is just sitting right there. That's too big of a project that I didn't want to do right now. I wanted to get some smaller stuff down, done first. So I was working on this and then the uh, engine showed up today. So starting to work on this, I was going to get this done then work on the orange hydro and then do the uh, HT14. So there's, these engines just really don't fit in here really good. The bigger ones that, that are like the, the big black ones, like a Predator 212 fits in these great, but anything larger, they just, they don't fit. So had to cut the frame, which I'm totally against doing that, but I guess it had to be done. Cut it out right there and I cut right there just to make everything fit a little bit nicer. It seems to kind of fit if the hood is moved back all the way it does just bump the side. And the engine still has to move that way. So I might have to take the shroud off for the air filter or modify it or something. Because I'm not going to cut a hood. I've never cut a hood on anything and I'm not about to do that because... That's not the right way to do it. So I'm actually going to get some stuff done on this one here and come back. Okay, so made some progress on the 66. Got the four holes drilled for the engine. The frame, I guess I already said, showed that before, but that's cut out. Got the new battery tray welded on. And the clutch actually fastened on, so that seems to work. It actually stops about there, which is kind of cool. Had to notch out the frame right back there just because this clutch is way farther back than where it really normally would be. So I had to cut a little hole in the frame there just because the clutch is too far back. So I'm going to get this engine put in and then I'll come back when that, once it's in. Okay, as you can see, I did get the engine in. I actually was able to get everything pretty much done to drive it around. So the hood, a little tricky to open, but I got a new belt put on for it. It's very small. It was like 74 inches long. Got the two little things here bent just for something to keep the belt from falling off. Homemade clutch is installed and that seems to work pretty good. So what's next is, or what's left, move this uh, hood strap thing or hood um, support over so it's just going to drill a new hole in the dash new hole in the grill move it over figure out a cover for this air filter because i don't like that and something else for an exhaust because normally there's like a hole in the front here for the exhaust to go out but on this one it's pretty much all sealed there and it's just going to get really hot and uh need a key switch hooked up because it's kind of a pain to reach around here and I ordered a tachometer for it and it didn't show up and they didn't even ship it out yet. So that kind of sucks. It's a tachometer slash hour gauge, kind of all in one thing. So yeah, I'm going to get a few of those things done that I mentioned and come back. Okay, so I did a bunch more work to it. I got the dozer blade obviously put on and that's one of the main things this tractor is going to do. One of my homemade three-point hitches and I had to actually make some adjustments to it. So if you look down in here, there's a couple of spacers there. That's because otherwise this handle would just barely rub the fender. And these three points that I actually make, this part here is actually a little bit taller than what the factory ones were. So I chose my, one, of them, one of them that I made just because the handle fits a little bit better. And it actually goes up and down perfectly fine. So I actually made 100% that three point hitch. So the actual lift handle, these two uh, bars here and the actual, these black pieces too. And I know before when I posted about these that uh, people were saying that they're just gonna fold up and I've, I've got probably 10 sets of them that were made the same and none of them had folded up on me. I got that tachometer finally, has 0.3 hours on it. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll drive it around with the camera on.
And as you probably saw by there, the tachometer slash hour gauge works. And I also hooked up the key ignition switch. A um, little bit. I can put that open. There we go. I move that support over on the muffler. Show you a little bit more on the muffler. Um, bolts down there on the frame. And then uh, comes up like that and just bolts on the muffler. And then there's that uh, just like a intake plate or a, not intake, exhaust little plate there. That'd be from my muffler on just like a lawnmower. Piece of pipe welded into this muffler with that thing angled down. That's a muffler off of like a Briggs, like vertical shaft engine. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, just for the fun of it, I'll show you a little bit I've been doing on this orange hydro, as well as the HT14. So the HT14 is pretty much exactly how you saw it in the last video. And the orange hydro, um, so you guys probably saw this if you were subscribed to me or watched a video on this, I don't even know, at the beginning of the year, a long time ago, that I made an entire frame from scratch just out of a basically sheet metal. Well, here it is. It's actually finally coming together because I now have a transmission for it. So hide to release will just be this little thing here. You pull this up, you take, take that cotter pin out there, then you put it in the lower hole, which will be the release. Short and reverse lever inside this disc here is basically this. This is kind of how it works. So on hydro transmissions, if it has a lever, you have to have either like a clutch or a brake system in there that kind of clamps down like this. Because otherwise, you're pushing the lever forward and as soon as you let go, it's going to spring right back to neutral. Just because of the resistance and the, basically the oil pressure. So exactly what this is, is basically a cork disc or clutch disc basically. And then like a gigantic washer, which is part of a clutch. That just goes on there and it's actually got a spring on the inside that is adjustable with that nut that tensions that spring and makes that lever actually stay in one spot. And all this is still a work in progress. Um, nothing's actually done, but I was just kind of showing you the basic concept. Um, so the hydro lever, you pull that up and it pushes that pin, kind of hard to push, pushes that pin in, which makes it so that you can actually release the hydro and be able to drive it. Just a spring here so that when you push it up, it has a little bit of a spring resistance on it. A adjustment there so you can adjust exactly right. Um, had to cut a hole on the side to make sure the pulley and fan when that gets put on fits. And then I need a bracket that needs to get welded onto the steering box coming down to push on this triangle piece which operates the steering. And then I had to cut a hole in the top of the frame for the oil reservoir. And yeah, it's slowly coming together. Next video I will do will be basically all on this tractor. So yeah, um, I will get another video coming soon on this and probably something else. Thanks for watching.